So if you had told me a few years ago that I'd be standing in front of you today, self-employed and pregnant, I would probably say you were quite insane. Bonkers. We're all mad here, right? But it just so happens that I am. And I stand here in front of you happily independent, blissfully pregnant, and living the kind of life that I only thought I had dreams that I would be able to do. So where did I find this rebellious spirit? How did I find my entrepreneurial capability? Well, <laughs> I'm going to blame my mother, as we all do from time to time, right? So this is my beautiful mum, and one of her favorite expressions for me is, see him off, Kath, go and do it, be yourself, see him off. So this is 1973, she's 21 years old, beaming a smile out of her face because she's just landed a job at a car plant run by British Leyland. Now, British Leyland was the British state-owned car factories back in the 70s, but you'll know their brands, Jaguar, Land Rover, the Mini, right? So this is like big stuff. And one of the things that I remember her telling me about this job was that when she got the, offer of the, let the letter of the offer for her job, it basically described to her her pay and conditions for that position. And in that letter, there was a table with how much she was going to be paid. And in that table, there were two columns. One was for the rate for men, and the other was the rate for women. Well, I went online, and I found something reasonably similar. Well, my mum and I chewed the fat over this for quite some time, and we both came up with the idea, well, at least they're being honest. You know, when we get swallowed up with these ideas of, you know, nowadays it's all the gender pay gap, it's all unconscious bias, this, blarney, blarney. Lean in harder this way, rah, rah. When I worked in the corporate world, I was leaning in so far I was horizontal. <laughs> I was literally spiritual corporate planking. <laughs> But it made no difference. It made no difference at all. And around the world right now, there are women who are being paid less than men for the same work. There are women that are being paid nothing at all. It's still a huge problem. And here in Australia, we have our Workplace Gender Equality Agency, and every year they produce a bunch of statistics that show us just how far we haven't quite got yet. So this year, the gender pay gap for all employment across Australia is about 15.3%. If you're a full-time worker, It's actually more like 21.3%, which is the equivalent of about 27,000 Australian dollars per year that women are earning less than men. How many full-time working women in this room would like 27 grand right now? Excellent. <laughs> I'm not Oprah, sorry, it's not actually an offer. <laughs> But in all seriousness, when you look at the statistics about how we haven't changed, I actually think they're a bigger marker, because in the last 20, 30 years, that gender pay gap has not statistically significantly changed. 20 years ago, it was around the 16% mark. So it's that statistic I find actually tells us more, that the law that we're putting in, really great legislation, we've had law from the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, even as late as 1999 with the Equal Opportunities for Women in the Workplace Act here in Australia we still haven't made any change significantly. So maybe the law isn't the problem. Maybe it's the system that the law is being applied to that's the problem. Now, I work in STEM, and so women in STEM, for example, we have this uh, issue that, you know, some graduates in STEM careers, that's science, technology, engineering and maths, a lot of the subject matter is about a 50-50% graduate, goes to about 40% female, 60% male, and then goes to about 13% at senior professorial level. So you go from PhD at 40% to senior prof at around 13%. I call that the gaping jaws of disappointment graph. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just not getting any better. So now they talk about, let's do 50-50 on boards by 2030. Let's look at having gender equality by 2050. Let's look at 2100. It's going to take 180 years before we actually make any difference with this stuff. And I just want to know why it can't be 2017. Like, why can't it be 2017? So glad you're all clapping and not booing. 
But there's one thing I know about change, because I've been living it the last few years. There's only one thing you need to do with change, and that is actually instigate it. Seems quite simple, right? Well, JFK once said, "Conformity is the jailer of freedom, and the enemy of growth." I like JFK. He put people on the moon. He had vision, right? The problem is, all of my life, I've been taught to conform. I was a good girl. I went to school. I got educated. I went to university. I studied environmental science. I did a PhD. My education is, has been my wings. Education is something that everyone should have a right to, to allow you to reach your full potential. I spent nearly 10 years in tertiary education. I then spent nearly 10 years in a corporate job, various different corporate jobs all across the world, from the UK to Australia. And in those 10 years in that corporate world, they said, "Oh, you're climbing the corporate ladder." But for me, it was more of a greasy pole, <laughs> or maybe barren flat land. So you know, you're working to fill a timesheet on a Friday with a sense of panic. You're working so that you can pay your bills. You're working so that you can just keep your head above water. Just keep your head above water. Just survive. But we get told to do these things so we can get mortgages. We get told to do these things so that we can actually live the life we were supposed to live. Well, unfortunately for me, the corporate career really didn't hold, hold much love until I fell across something that I really did get very passionate about, and that is something called drones for good. So one of the things that I have really enjoyed working in for the last five years is this idea that you can take commercial drone technology and apply it to some of the world's hardest problems. We can use drones after a cyclone, for example, to rescue people, to find out where they are, to find out where the roads are down. We can use drones to monitor power lines so people aren't put in danger anymore. We're able to use drones for pretty much anything that takes boring, long driving or flying or any kind of activity. And I love the fact that I could take my environmental science. Background and my PhD, and really start chewing into this subject matter. And we had some great wins. We did some world-first work here in Australia that I'm still so proud of, and people haven't repeated. But I had a problem. I was doing this not in an academic environment. I was doing it in a corporate world, and I was also ahead of everybody. So next to these big audacious goals that I had for what we could use, I was ahead of my peers. I was ahead of the competition. I was ahead of my clients. I was too far in front, and so I ended up screaming these ideas into a vacuum where no one was really listening, couldn't really relate, and it was really hard work. So unfortunately, my enthusiasm started rotting into frustration, and eventually, one day. I felt a force within me that I can only describe as when an immovable object gets hit by an unstoppable force. I had mentally left the building. I had walked through a one-way door. I decided I didn't want to keep working in the system that I had been working in. Well, what does one do when one decides to leave everything one has ever been trained to do? <laughs> Well, my advice to you there is: there's only one thing you can rely on, and that's actually yourself. So for me, I took my brains and I took my brand, and I created a little consulting company. But I wanted more than just to be a replica of the thing that I'd just left. So I took my brains and I took my brand and I took my heart and I took my gut, and I took those gender statistics and I took those ideas about how I wanted the world to be a better place, and I managed to find myself on a very windy, windy, bumpy road to creating a number of businesses. One of which is called She Flies. Now, She Flies is all about what the world could be, rather than what we think it actually is. I co-founded She Flies with Dr. Karen Joyce, who's an incredibly smart scientist who uses drones to monitor the Great Barrier Reef here in Australia, up in Queensland. So Karen and I had a good conversation one day about the drone industry because the drone industry for me is like the most egalitarian and accessible technology that pretty much anyone can get their hands on. How many people in the room here have a drone? Great, we need more women putting their hands up for that one. Because the first thing that Karen and I found out when we called across our global networks was that women make up fewer than one percent of the commercial drone industry globally. Take it to another level. All of the drones that are aimed at children are very, very gender biased towards boys. There's no drones that are gender neutral. You don't have to have drones covered in pink glitter for them to actually appeal to girls. 
You just have to have them not looking like they're appealing to boys. So Karen and I put our heads together and we tried to think, what else can we do? And so we went online and tested the pulse of the internet. Now, if you go to Google, you can actually put into Google images, not suitable for work, be very careful where you do this, drones and girls. <laughs> you can imagine, right? Lying underneath them, holding them there, skimpy shorts, trying to sell them. They're a lot sexier than me. They don't have a uterus the size of a basketball that I currently have, you know? Just lying there with the drones. Well, anyway, the converse story is if you go in and you put drones and boys, you get Father's Day, you get cool toys, you get cool sports, you get search and rescue. And so there's this massive difference in the narrative that's coming out of the internet. And we were just like, that's not what I do for a living. <laughs> like, I don't want people to see that for a living. And so Karen and I decided that we were going to try and change the narrative by actually engaging young women and girls across Australia. And so what we do now is we run camps for girls, and we've been running them across northern Australia. We go into schools, we teach, teach teachers, we train up parents, we even teach boys. We're not, we're not gender biased. <laughs> um, and we've been getting girls into drone technology all the way across Australia. We've now got instru instructors based across Australia and volunteers clawing at us to try and get involved with what we do. So we hit on something, values-led, trying to change what we saw was the problem. You see it, you own it, right? And so the best thing about She Flies is now is we're going global. And so we're going to be rolling out across the States and Europe and across Asia Pacific in 2018. <laughs> She who dares, learns. And so the biggest thing for me now is that I have been able to step outside of the system that I was finding so constricting. I was able to, and you are also able to, start your own businesses based around your own ideas. We can create change from outside the system that influences the system. People don't argue with success. I know for a fact in my businesses there is no gender pay gap. You can create change from the outside in. But of all of the five or six businesses that I'm currently running, there's one thing that I've noticed that's key, and that is the most successful ones I have are the ones where I'm collaborating with other people. So if there's one piece of advice I can give to any of you that are now thinking about that startup, that idea, that buzz you've got going in your head, that thing that you fear or you want to change, is that if you want to go fast, you go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. Thank you.